going on between the winter weather in Colorado and Lily still dissipating over in Louisiana. We have a lot of advisories here. But for Oklahoma, flash flood warning for Alfalfa County and also some river flood warnings up in Kay County and then a severe thunderstorm watch where you see the blue counties there for much of central and parts of western Oklahoma. On the storm tracker here, we'll zoom on in. Take a look at central Oklahoma. Here's the metro I-35, a line of scattered showers and thunderstorms. Most of these are moderate to heavy in intensity. There are no severe thunderstorm warnings right now. These are moving northeasterly around 30 miles per hour, but they should go ahead and continue to move on into central Oklahoma later on tonight. Well, let's go ahead and take the, vi the video here from Jim Gardner and Chopper 4. We had some wall clouds earlier today in western Oklahoma, some rainfall, some fairly heavy rain. You know, over four to seven inches of rain has fallen in northern Oklahoma. That view from Chopper 4 showing some of those wall clouds and the heavier downpours of rain. Well, let's go back to the uh, storm tracker here. We can show you that it looks like we have uh, this uh, thunderstorm activity moving in from the west. And control room, if we can go to the computer here, the old weather computer, let's take a look at that. And we can show you, we're going to shift gears and talk about Lily. Lily has weakened quickly. It's moving to the north. Now a weakening tropical storm. It has left behind a trail of damage. Rash Rashonda Tate is in the uh, newsroom with more. Rashonda. Well, Mike, it was expected to be one of the worst uh, in years. And at one point, it did bring wind gusts up to 100 miles an hour, but Lily packed nowhere near the magnitude that everyone expected. Here's more. Tens of thousands of people across Louisiana are without power. Work crews are already set to move in, and residents will begin heading home in the coming days to cope with the obstacles that Lily left behind. But it's nowhere near as bad as many thought it would be. We were really, really concerned about this thing uh, for our own lives, and we're ready to uh, do what we needed to do to save ourselves, but luckily it did back off. Lily toppled trees, tore up roofs, downed power lines, and overwhelmed many stormwater systems. And tattered nerves along the way. Cleanup and repair is a far cry, though, from catastrophe and a rebuilding effort from the ground up, what many thought they'd be facing. Lily bore inland as a Category 4 hurricane packing winds of more than 140 miles an hour, only to weaken hours before landfall. In Lafayette, Louisiana, police spent the night waiting for what forecasters were calling a monster. At a certain determination, when the winds got a little bit, what we thought was too much, we told our officers either to come in or to, to, to seek, seek shelter. By late afternoon, Lily had been downgraded from a four to a two, but continued to spew violent weather, bands of wind and rain. I think basically we dodged a bullet. We were relieved that it wasn't as bad as it could have been. Now, we can tell you that no deaths were reported along the U.S. Gulf Coast. Injuries included three people hurt in Louisiana. Earlier this week, Lily killed eight people in the Caribbean. Mike. Rashonda Tate from the Sky Center tonight. We appreciate that. Tammy, we're tracking a change of seasons from this balmy summer weather to cool, crisp fall weather moving towards central Oklahoma from the northwest. We'll update that forecast in just a few minutes. Mike, thank you. Once Lily hit land, forecasters, the National Weather Service in Norman, started predicting what she would do next. It's their job to predict any severe weather that hits as a result of the hurricane. They've already issued several tornado watches, mainly for Louisiana and Mississippi. And they also debuted a new piece of weather equipment called a smart radar. The first time it was deployed was last year in a NASA-sponsored project, and, and we deployed in Tropical Storm Gabrielle. But this is the first time the smart radar was deployed in a hurricane, and a fairly major hurricane. That radar collected valuable data from the center of the storm, data that will help forecasters predict hurricane patterns in the future. And there's an unusual connection tonight between Hurricane Lily and an Oklahoma newborn. Coming up a little bit later, while she'll never forget Hurricane Lily. That's in about 10 minutes right here on Oklahoma's News Channel 4. Well, tonight, allegations that one of Oklahoma City's public high schools is pushing religion on its students. News Channel 4's Allie Meyer is on the night beat tonight, and she is live at U.S. Grant High School with the latest on this. Allie. Well, Kevin, it was Tuesday morning where teachers here brought their classrooms down to the auditorium to hear a group of motivational speakers. Two of them were relatives of a Columbine victim. Now, we're told administrators here were briefed on the message, and they thought it was appropriate. But after the message was over, they say the group started handing out objectionable material. It's called the Book of Hope. It was part of the presentation at U.S. Grant, offered to students after the program by relatives of those lost at Columbine High. Some of the students said, hey, did, it, did anybody review this before it came in? Because they knew that parts and elements of it were wrong. 
Inside the cover, it reads the story of the life of Jesus. There are sections on following Jesus and the parables of Jesus. School administrators say the Book of Hope was a surprise move. We didn't expect that. They did not uh, tell us that they would do this either. The principal reviewed all the group's material beforehand. The speakers call themselves Life Choice. Wallace says he knew they'd be speaking about school violence, drugs, abuse. But the Book of Hope was absent from their proposal. If they had asked us and if they had told us they had anything of that nature, I would have said, no, I like your assembly, want your assembly, but let's don't be handing out that kind of literature. According to the State Federation of Teachers, the book needs to stay out of public schools. It's the law. You have to understand, uh, we have a responsibility to the children that we teach and to the parents who trusted those children to us. And if they're of a different faith than the faith of this particular program, then we are actually offending them. Now that's right. Tonight I spoke with the people from Life Choice over the phone. They tell me it was their niece, Rachel, who was gunned down in Columbine, and they say the book was Rachel's lifeline right before that time. They also say Rachel died because she believed in the book. They say their program, Life Choice, is friendly to all faiths, and they point out they don't push the material on any of the students. No one has to take it, but certainly, Kevin, the administrators here at the school say if they'd known about it, they wouldn't have allowed it. All That's right, Allie, thank you. Now, the group Life Choice travels the country as motivational speakers. We know they've done several assemblies at Tulsa area high schools, and they say they have never had complaints about the Book of Hope. Topping tonight's Crime Watch, Oklahoma City police say a child predator they've been searching for since May is now targeting children near one south side school. Police asked us not to reveal which school just yet for their investigative purposes, but we took the suspect's sketches to the school, and now school officials will make sure every child takes home a copy. Now that we have sketches of this individual, we'll be printing that sketch and a detailed letter that we'll be sending home with the children, uh, informing the parents of, of the sightings in the neighborhood. We spoke with several young girls on their way home from school who say they know how to handle stranger danger by never talking with someone they don't know and finding an adult when it's needed. Well, it's happened again. An elderly woman is the victim of a home invasion, this time in Dell City, the two suspects still on the run. It was just before midnight Wednesday when the pair stormed through the back door of this home on Southeast 22nd. The men wore ski masks and gloves. They tied up the woman who lived here, then ransacked her home, taking her purse and her medication. The victim did suffer a minor injury to her hand. Some University of Oklahoma students made an unusual discovery. The students are part of an architecture class building a homeless shelter. And when they dug down into the earth for the foundation, crude oil, black gold, began to bubble up out of the ground. It turns out the it's students okay. hit an old concrete storage tank dating back to the early oh, 1900s. The roof of the tank was removed and this is apparently just left over. The thing probably didn't pay very much attention to cleaning the oil out very carefully. The Corporation Commission is now testing the oil to see if any environmental damage was done. The project will be delayed just a couple of months while crews clean up the crude oil. Well, how about this? An Oklahoma City school principal is being honored as one of the best in the nation. Deanne Davis is the principal at Sequoia Elementary School, and next week she'll travel to Washington, D.C. to be honored along with 62 other principals from across the nation. Davis says she's excited about the chance to represent Oklahoma. Well, it's a real honor, and it's an humbling experience to work with uh, as many wonderful people as I do in the state of Oklahoma and then be able to represent them. Davis is being honored by the National Distinguished Principals Program. It's sponsored by the U.S. Department of Education. Hey, do you know a teacher who you think goes above and beyond their job? Nominate them for our Oklahoma's Best for Education Award. All you have to do is send it to 444 East Britain Road, easy address to remember here in Oklahoma City. The zip is 73114. Just tell us why they deserve the award, where they teach, and your name and number. You can also nominate a teacher online. All you have to do is head over to KFOR.com. Coming up. She's too young to know right now, but this Oklahoma newborn will never forget Hurricane Lily, the wild connection ahead. And next. A few showers and thunderstorms still moving towards central Oklahoma tonight. No severe weather right now. The weekend welcoming in fall temperatures. We'll have that and your football forecast next. You are watching Oklahoma's News Channel 4 at 10 with Linda Cavanaugh, Kevin Ogle, 
the forewarn storm team's mike morgan bob barry jr with sports and brad edwards in your corner are you registered to vote it's simple and nothing could be more american get a voter registration form in any public library post office or local tag agency or download it at kfor.com fill it out send it in and claim your right to vote B.C. Clark Jewelers is well known for its incredible selection of quality diamonds, designer jewelry, name brand watches, and our popular Pray for Rain engagement ring promotion. What you may not know is B.C. Clark has one of the finest selections of giftware in the entire Southwest. Just take a look. B.C. Clark for diamonds, jewelry, engagement rings, watches, and fine giftware. Where can you find 0% financing for 60 months, get the biggest year in discounts of the year, and a $10,000 best price guarantee? You can in Yukon at Joe Cooper Ford of Yukon. Come get a new Ranger, 0% financing, only $189 a month. We've got new F-150s, only $235 a month. Brand new Taurus is only $255 a month. And a great selection of Windstars with 0% financing. Who loves you, Oklahoma? Joe Cooper Ford of Yukon. On Route 66 in Yukon. Come see us. Back in 1934, baseball's MVP was a colorful pitcher named Dizzy Dean. But the year before that, Old Sham was already helping folks protect their home with a good foundation. Today, nothing beats Old Shan in the patented technology of their cable lock system. That's why Old Shan Foundation Repair backs their work with a lifetime transferable warranty. Like Dizzy Dean said, it ain't bragging if you can do it. So fix it with Old Shan and fix it for good. I'm an Oklahoman by birth and by choice. I refuse to believe or accept that Oklahoma has to always be the seventh poorest state in the country. We want Oklahoma to be the kind of state that our kids don't have to leave to get a better job. Our number one export is not wheat, oil, or gas. It's our kids. And I believe that we can have a better Oklahoma than that. My friends, fellow Oklahomans, our best days are ahead of us. It's truck tr tr tober Now, David Stanley Chevrolet will match the rebate on any Chevy truck or sport utility. It's truck tr tr tober If the Chevy rebate is 4000 David Stanley will match it to make it an incredible 8000 Every truck will be sold regardless of profit. And once we make a deal, we'll pay off your trade no matter how much you owe. Now through Monday at David Stanley Chevrolet, it's truck tr 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 tober truck tober is on at I-240 in South Walker. Well, you know, Louisiana and Texas residents have had their eyes to the skies lately. Hurricane Lily left quite an impression, but she's not the only Lily getting lots of attention today. This afternoon, baby Lily was born right here in the metro. From our mobile newsroom tonight, the special arrival of a little hurricane. News Channel 4's Lance West is live from Mercy Hospital with a very special story, Lance. Tammy, the family actually settled on the name Lily months before the storm was ever forecast, but just like the hurricane, their Lily is already a bundle of energy. For Mickey and Carrie Whitley, Lily is no monster. This Edmund couple is actually celebrating her arrival. Yeah, welcome our little Hurricane Lily. So it's just really ironic that we would have a baby named Lily picked out and that the hurricane had hit today. Yeah, I'm hoping she doesn't act like a hurricane. <laughs> This seven pound, eight ounce hurricane made landfall around three o'clock Thursday afternoon. And this first time mom is hopeful her lily won't be as destructive as mother nature's. No plans, if she ends up being a hurricane, this might be it, but. <laughs> <laughs> when baby Lily looks back on this day, years from now, she'll know her namesake made news all over the country. Closed for Lily, residents flee as Lily approaches. Lily expected to hit today. <laughs> But for this family, the biggest headline is a little girl named Lily. Uh, she's good. She's great. Yeah, she's perfect in every way. She is certainly a beautiful little baby. Her name actually is Lillian Faith Whitley. But to the family, she will always be known as Hurricane Lily. <laughs> <laughs> Lily made a hit today, didn't she? Yes, she did. Lance, thank you. The new family of three is expected to be released from the hospital Saturday morning.
the most accurate forecast with the forewarned storm team's Mike Morgan. A weather change is about to move into Oklahoma City tonight, and it'll be accompanied by a couple of showers and thunderstorms. I don't think we'll see very much rain, but you might hear some rumbles of thunder, and then it'll go from summer to fall. Here's our view outside tonight. We have a partly to mostly cloudy sky, a view of Midwest City, Interstate 40, temperatures in the warm and and breezy upper 70s and mid 70s tonight here in central Oklahoma. It'll stay warm here until the front comes on through the next couple hours the way it looks. 77 degrees, southeast winds at 14 and with 73% humidity, enough fuel to keep those thunderstorms going. Bus stop forecast, tomorrow morning we will have a north wind and we'll have noticeably cooler and drier air moving in. Look for a lot of wind. Temperatures will be around 64 for the bus stop and then by recess, say 1130 or so in the lower 70s. We'll have clearing skies as the morning moves along. Here's the broad view on the forewarn edge. We're tracking the uh, showers and thunderstorms. That severe thunderstorm watch continues. Flash flood warning for Alfalfa County. Seven to eight inches of rain. Two feet rushing over the roads in some parts of Alfalfa County. And some river flood warnings for parts of Kay and Noble counties. Snow in the Rockies with freeze warnings. One to two feet of snow has been pretty common. And the wind advisories and a few tornado warnings with remnants of Lily tonight. Here's the broad view on the edge. We can show you that line of thunderstorms running from near Wichita Falls up to near Weatherford and the Cherokee truck stop up into northern Oklahoma just to the west of Enid up into Grant County near Medford this evening. We'll go ahead and zoom on in here, take a little closer look. Movements northeasterly at 30 to 35. This will be the rain. This is what we're going to see, and it won't last very long, so we'll be lucky to get a half inch of rain for the heaviest amounts, and some of us may just see a tenth of an inch of rain as the rain will be very widely scattered, and we'll move on through pretty quickly. Here's the storm tracker, and we'll zoom in here to the western sides of town, running pretty much from uh, Corn and Colony, Mountain View and Carnegie, on up to Weatherford Hydro, just west of Red Rock Canyon, Watonga, Roman Nose, O'Keen, all the way up into uh, Cleo Springs and Oriana. Earlier, these were a little bit more intense. David Payne pulling a big day today. Yes, David was out here this morning doing the weather, but in Taloga and Sealing this afternoon, tracking some 60 mile per hour winds and a bit of uh, weak rotation, but nothing uh, too. Uh, too big and too bad developed out of that, fortunately. Our daytime high temperature was 87 degrees today, 63 the morning low. As of yet, no rain has fallen. Looks like our temperatures will be warm for the next couple of hours, mostly in the upper 70s and mid 70s. And